My parents were not happy to find out what I'd been doing after school. Turned out my mentor was not a Harvard-educated tutor, as they had been led to believe. They were seeing for the first time what I had known for months. Xavier was a powerful sorcerer, a protector of the universe, and sworn guardian of this corner of the multiverse. You're his teacher. You must be a, a, a hundred and three years old. My mom was yelling at Xavier as my dad regained consciousness from his fainting episode. Actually, I'm a thousand and eight years old, give or take a few. Hard to keep track after a millennia. Oh, great. And he's completely insane on top of everything else. My dad was struggling to his feet and blinking his eyes rapidly, looking stunned. Did I just see what I think I saw? Did you just shoot lightning bolts out of your fingertips, young man? Xavier looked nonplussed. He simply waved his hand in the air and began speaking in a low voice. I don't have time for this. Okay, you two, look into my eyes. Don't remember, misremember this November. My parents blinked and stood like zombies in front of us, their arms hanging limply at their sides. Then they collapsed on the floor, snoring loudly. Xavier grabbed my arm and yanked me down the stairs forcefully. There, takes care of that. Now let's get back to your training. Neither my mom nor my dad would remember any of what just happened. Which was good news for me, since I'd just shot a girl with a lightning bolt. And they'd probably ground me for that. Or, even worse, take away my Nintendo Switch. You really need to teach me that spell, I said, as we walked out the front door. That would come in handy. Later that day, after a brief rest and trip to the local diner for waffles and syrup with extra whipped cream and strawberries, we traveled back to the Abyss Dimension. What are we doing back here again? I complained to Xavier, instantly feeling depressed. It was hard not to be saddened by this place, looking around at all the cats floating through the air, crumpling houses and streets, cars and lampposts, all drifting in a sea of darkness. Nothing was alive except for the cats. I told you he said. There's something off about this place. Could be the key to everything. And besides, I figured this would be a good place for you to start your training against the Chaos Kid, as he's come to be known across the multiverse. He's 18-0 against rival apprentices. It's almost unheard of. Oh, man. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm ready for that guy yet. Uh, isn't there another apprentice we could battle first? Uh, uh, build up my confidence a bit. I just got this wand, and I haven't even had a chance to try it out yet. I looked down at the wand, made of gnarled, polished old wood, which I had clutched in my hand. Roses were wrapped around it, giving it a slightly feminine touch. By the way, uh, can we get the roses off of this thing somehow? I feel like I'm on Team Rocket over here. It's not very progressive. Disappointed in you, kid. I considered this for a few seconds, then I realized Xavier was completely misunderstanding me yet again. No, not like that, like Pokemon. His bushy eyebrows raised even higher. If you want to have a chat about the birds and the bees, I'm afraid that's more your parents' responsibility. I had to have that chat with Bruca once, and, uh, still not over it. Never, never mind. Please, can we just drop this? I'll just keep the damn roses if it means we never, ever, ever have to talk about this again. As you wish. Now. What were you saying about training? Can you show me some more spells that I can use? Spells or a dime a dozen, boy. You can wander the multiverse on your own time, decide which worlds you wish to channel. Oh. Well, what are you going to show me then? I thought that the channeling other worlds was the only skill we had to use. He looked offended at that. Really? Can't think of anything else that's gotten you out of a jam? Uh, similarly, a technique Bruca's used outsmarts you again and again. I couldn't figure out what he was talking about. The ability to travel between worlds is an incredible power in and of itself, he began, like a lecturer speaking to an audience of students. It can be used to your advantage in many ways, both offensively and defensively. The portals can also be used to scout your enemy's position, to take advantage of them when their back is turned. Hmm. I guess I hadn't thought about it much. But you're right. He you saved my life with Derek by teleporting us behind him using a portal. Ruka stole the wand I won from Clint by stealing it from me the last second, appearing out of nowhere by using a portal. She was probably watching me, too, using a peephole from another dimension. Exactly. Now we have two lessons to cover today. Both of them make full use of the portals, and both of them will have techniques that catch the Chaos Kid completely by surprise. 
I'm going to show you the power of combos and counters. Even Bruca doesn't know about this. But maybe the first time since my training began, I felt like I was learning something useful. I nodded my head and told Xavier to continue. Maybe he wasn't such a terrible teacher after all. Again! Xavier shouted, wrapping the bottom of his staff against the stone floor of the floating pedestal of rock that we were standing on. We were hovering around the abyssal dimension, using the floating chunks of rocks as traveling platforms. It's pretty fun, I'm not gonna lie. But the training was getting to be exhausting. Really? I said, panting and out of breath. I'm thankful for all the new techniques, Xavier, but can we call it a day after this? I know, I know you don't technically need to eat food anymore, but I'm starving. He looked annoyed, but conceded. Okay, last round. Let's see if you can finally best me, boy. I nodded, smiling deviously at him. I was finally getting the hang of this. It was my turn to win a round. All right, go. Xavier shot a laser beam of energy at me, which would have taken my head clean off, but I created a portal and used that to deflect the attack into an unoccupied world. Then I opened another portal behind Xavier, allowing the bolt of energy out and back in our world, restoring the balance. An added benefit was it hit Xavier in his arm, singeing his robes black. Ah! Blast you. Got me with that one. I couldn't help but smile. I had countered his spell successfully. Now it's time for a combination attack. Leaping through the air, I used a portal to teleport behind him, then used a lightning bolt the moment I came through the other side, following that up with vines, a blast of sand, and some superfluous rose petals. A new spell which I wasn't aware I could do. Xavier was nowhere to be seen amidst the chaos of all this, and I realized why a second later. He teleported from a portal above me, landing directly behind me. I spun around and aimed my finger guns at him, ready to fire, when he yelled loudly in his authoritative voice, STOP! His gaze was staring far off in the distance. Well, oh, come on, Xavier. You can't just quit right when I'm about to beat you, finally. Ha! Not even close. Seriously, uh, what, uh, what, what is that? Something was floating towards us through the air, and I struggled to make out what it was. It looked familiar. What the... is that... Cat food? The triangular piece of kibble was slowly coming towards us, and I noticed that a fat tabby cat was zooming through the air in pursuit, like Homer Simpson aboard the space shuttle munching on potato chips. His proton belly swung pendulously around in a circle as he spun around, doing 360s. His face looked surprisingly happy, considering our surroundings. Xavier plucked the piece of cat food out of the air, just as the kitty was opening its jaws to snatch it up. Its maw snapped closed and it looked at us with an annoyed glare before bouncing softly into my belly. I picked up the cat, held it in my arms, stroking its soft furry head. It began to purr, looking like maybe it hadn't been that hungry after all. My mentor tossed the piece of kibble into his mouth, chewing it loudly with a quizzical look on his face. Interesting, he said, munching on it and savoring the flavor as the cat in my arms watched him with a jealous look. Tuna flavored. First of all, gross. Uh, second? What's on your mind, Xavier? Not sure yet. I have a sneaking suspicion about how this dimension's wildlife is staying afloat. Specifically, kitties. Let's keep working to get you ready for the Chaos Kid. No rest for the weary. You're going to need to learn a few more spells if you're going to beat him. What, a, what about dinner? I'm, I'm hungry. Grab some kibble. There looks to be a lot more of it floating around. It's time for you to earn that wand, young man. Well, how about that, I thought to myself. I've graduated from boy to young man. I was moving up in the world. <laughs> Things are about to get a hell of a lot more chaotic after that. Hey guys, I just want to make sure that all of you take a look in the description down below for multiple different reasons. The main reason I'm talking about right now, though, is to look at the author's links. Every time that I do a story on one of these platforms, I post links from the authors. Some of them are books that the authors put out. If you like the stories that you hear, then I highly, highly encourage you to go scroll down, take a look in the description, click one of those links. If you like that author, I guarantee you they have something else that you're going to like. And if they have a book out there, you're going to love that book. I mean, hell, that's how Tales from the Gas Station became what it is, okay? If you guys heard it on YouTube, then hey, there are more, bigger, better versions of it out there that you can get on Amazon or Audible or No Sleep or what have you. So for reals, uh, the, scroll down, check out the links. And that's not like an advertisement thing. I'm just like, look, you're, this is for your benefit. Check it out.
And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. Thank you so much. A very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Reaper61167, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Vicky McQuickie, Sam High, Crusader Chocobo, Spooky Shell, Adam Morris, Grand Moth the Milky, Big Smoke369, Captain Scurvy, Salty Irish Poet, Esteban, Raiden Morris, Nate Cull, Horror Fan1212, Hour Minute Second Time, Kyle Resnack, David Martin, Scarrington the Unkempt, Robert Malcolm, Angela, Spanky, Snoochie Bucci, Seclude, Lupita Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Merxidum, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Catabaker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob Like Sharp Things, Violinian, Xavier Graphius, Lord Life's Best, Goring Tramagasy, Maria Walker, Emily Mitchell, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Dirt Diver Oath Matt Bach, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Hidden Tiger, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Psychomel, Nana, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Cronut 509, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Benjamin Welverett, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, thank you guys so, so much because you guys help me do everything that I do here. You guys help pay authors for stories and commission stories and do everything that I can do to make this channel and make this podcast a- a- the best it could possibly be. So thank you all for supporting me here. And as always, everyone, sweet dreams. <laughs>